All right, so today we have the new Isuzu D-Max. So this is a car that people have been waiting for for a long time and it's finally reached Australian shores. Uh, today we've got two models uh, in front of me. We've got one up from the base model and I think the LSU, they're both the dual cab utes. And yeah, let's go for a little tour and we'll go for a test drive afterwards. All right, let's have a look inside. So in terms of driving position, this is where a lot of utes tend to suffer, mainly because of lack of adjustment. So I'm six foot three or 190 centimeters. Our regular viewers will know this. I have the seat all the way back and I do fit quite comfortably. This ute is one of the few that actually has reach adjustable steering, which if you're tall, you'll know that it's absolutely vital for a comfortable driving position. In terms of the controls on the steering wheel, so volume on the left and cruise control on the right, it's quite a nice looking steering wheel, quite thick. Uh, this one isn't leather bolstered, just uh, I think urethane or plastic, but it does feel quite decent. On the door card, four power window switches. All of this, as expected, is hard. There's a bit of soft material there, but it's not very thick. In fact, I think it's just a piece of fabric because you can feel all the ridges going underneath, but otherwise it's pretty decent. In the center is a seven inch infotainment system. Uh, the higher end ones, which I'll show you in a bit, they get the larger nine inch unit. This one does look uh, quite a bit dated due to the massive black bezel, but you do still get wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Android Auto is wired connection though. So for a Ute though, it's pretty smart inside. A storage at the top, two cup holders, one square. Once you've got your large chocolate milk, that should fit in there. Manual park brake, and this is the six speed manual. Uh, regular air conditioning, no climate control on this model and the USB power socket. This is the four-wheel drive version. You can get this LSM in two configurations. You can get a two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. This one you can see here is the four-wheel drive, two high, four high, and four low there. And there is a relatively small cubby. It's not lined with anything, as you can see, so if you put hard or loose change in there, it's gonna rattle. In terms of passenger side storage, there is a little cubby on the top and a standard glove box. It's not too large, so you can tell by this, this is the handbook, it only just fits in there, so large items probably wouldn't. And this has the vinyl flooring as well. On the top, sunglasses holder and your regular assortment of cabin lights. Halogen, nothing too exciting. Same in the middle, LED interior lights would be nice. Drive for sunshade, no mirror. Same with the front passenger. And side, do they extend? No, so there's a bit of a gap. Uh, but otherwise, pretty good. The most important question is, do I fit behind myself? So let's check out the rear seats. The doors also give a relatively satisfying thunk when you close them. I know a lot of these commercial vehicles, they feel very tinny, but this one actually is quite solid. In the back seats, all right, space. So this seat is all the way back. For me, you can see my knees are touching. On shorter journeys should be okay, but I probably won't sit here for a longer trip. But this is more space in the back than let's say in the Hilux, but not as much in the, uh, as much as the Ford Ranger. In terms of headroom, my hair is brushing on the ceiling. I do technically fit, but uh, if you're six foot two or six foot three and above, you're gonna have a bit of a hard time on longer journeys, but anyone shorter will be just fine. In the back, handy hook. I call it the takeaway bag hook. You can just hang it on the passenger seat, which is nice. Rear air vents and also a USB port. And they see similar design in the front. They are also quite comfortable with the same contrasting rear stitching and a center armrest with two additional cup holders. And in the back, you have the rear camera. Integrated step. The rear lid is all right. It's not too heavy, although there's no sort of pneumatics. Uh, so you are bearing the entire weight of the tray. Pretty basic four uh, tie-down hooks on each corner and the base models except all the models except the x-terrain don't have any sort of lining so you have to either get a spray lining or get your own tub liner here all 
Okay, now over to the LSU. So chrome door handles and integrated side step. One thing which is a bit disappointing is that all models except for the most expensive X-Terrain are just standard key start. So if you want smart start, you have to pay the uh, top price for a D-Max. So in the cabin, this has the very nice and supple leather steering wheel with contrasting white stitching. Same thing with adjustment. Very comfortable. And you get a bit of extra um, piano black trim. I'm not sure how well this will hold uh, in more kind of rough conditions but let's be honest anyone that buys a more top of the range dual cab ute really is just buying it for lifestyle needs i'll put that in quotes so contrast stitching some nice materials on the door card and in the center is the looks much better nine inch infotainment system with the same wireless apple carplay and wired android auto this has the six-speed automatic transmission and climate control. They have toggle switches, so up and down, and they feel really nice to the touch. You can even hear it. Nice solid buttons. Uh, same thing with the cup holders. This one is fabric with the same stitching, and it's also not lined, unfortunately. The seat material is the same, so it's the same cloth than the, uh, as the LSM. And same thing with storage. All right, that's enough talking. Let's go for a drive. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Thank you.